Hello, I'm Jeff. Hello, I'm Patrick, and today we are joined by the full-time Fenrisian fabricator, Jason, or Val Bjorn. Hi. Hi. Hello there. Hi. 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 So happy I managed to get that out. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. You did well. Thank another, you. Another, another gold star on the fridge for you later. <laughs> ah, there we go. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, when you get 10, you can have a new box of Space Marines. Yes. <laughs> I'm very excited. See, we went off the rails straight, straight away. Straight away. Yeah, so it goes. Yeah, so it yeah. goes. There is no there is no rhyme or reason to this. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm oh, excited. you're very, very welcome. Um Whistle Stops Whistle Stop Tour of the UK at the moment you're on. Uh, what sort of stop am I on? No, whistle stop tour. Whistle stop <laughs> very quick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is very quick, but it's it's uh very impactful. I've got a lot of uh a lot of really cool things lined up. So cool. And you've so far, um your time here in Nottingham, you've been sculpting uh, you've been running a sculpting workshop, haven't you? Yeah, I had a two day workshop at T S N Arena. Yeah. Uh, it was really great. Had sixteen students. Yeah. They all did so well. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> they did amazing. It was great. Made some really good connections and, and even after the class. It's weird because, you know, you don't really see people's faces when you follow them on Instagram. Mm. And after the class, I started seeing the posts roll up. Oh, and look what I learned in Val Bjorn's class. And I'm like, I've been following you for years. Like, oh, how man. did I not know that that was, it was you? you? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and That's like, so cool. You know, some of them were pretty quiet. You know, they weren't as outspoken as as maybe I am, you know, when I'm just meeting new people in yeah. teacher mode. Yeah. So it, it was really great to see that kind of stuff, have that experience. Yeah. And excellent. So before we carry on with that, Jason slash Val Bjorn. Yeah. How did this whole become a thing? How far back are we going for your interactions with plastic plastic soldiers and then your adapting of plastic soldiers? Where does this all begin? Yeah. So for me, it was HeroQuest. Seems to be a bit of an in for a lot of people, HeroQuest. Yeah. 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 But that's a great segue into kind of my when that was introduced to me. I, I want to say I was probably eight to 10 years old. Yep. Um, grew up in rural Illinois in the U.S. Yeah. And we didn't really have Warhammer around. We had a bookstore. We had a comic book store. So a lot of my early influences were comic books and video games. I had Nintendo Power rolling in each month. And oh, uh, it was just that w- that made a big impact. But when I m- when my dad broke open Hero Quest and sat there with the DM screen and, you know, we were rolling dice and we're... Yeah pushing the minis around and oh we're really in a little dungeon right now we're pushing <laughs> minis around i was like okay this is where it's at and then i discovered uh warhammer fantasy when i went to college and got to a bigger city um and built some chaos warriors and stuff like that and that was around 2004 or so mm-hmm. then discovered space wolves around 2010 Fell out of the hobby for a little while, did some other stuff, and then 2019 hit, and I really dug in, like a lot of people through the pandemic. Yeah. And that's, I have uh, a background in ceramics, so I've always been pushing putty and clay around and stuff like that, but really got serious with sculpting on the minis because I really love Space Wolves so much. Yeah. And the kits I, were, I was buying, I was looking at the Space Wolves in the codexes. and looking at my favorite illustrations and thinking, like, this is raw. I really want these these raw barbaric figures like how can i make that feel real uh in the minis and so i set out on my on my saga uh to create you know that feeling when you're looking at a mini and it feels big when you start to shrink down those details like that and you have the big armor chunky armor panels and you've got those fine little details that you're starting to discover when you're looking at the mini it's like oh okay this is epic now and that's the vibe i I, I strive for yeah yeah so you um you said you started out in so was ceramics your your day job but initially at first uh ceramics was so i had my bfa in ceramics i thought i wanted to teach ceramics um and my parents are both ceramic artists oh wow so they've had a studio all growing up um i was out there making little making little men out of clay and mushrooms and all kinds of weird little organic stuff um and just thought I would follow in their footsteps. They had the life, right? They had the freedom. They could just walk out to their studio and do what they wanted. Um, and I was very fortunate for that. It was a really big influence on me. Oh. And so that's what I thought I wanted to do. Of course, graduating uh, college, I wasn't really grown up yet. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and so I just kind of 
that sort of fizzled out afterwards. I worked your your normal jobs for quite a while, including some pretty unique jobs along the way. <laughs> that that it, you know, if you want to ask about, I'll tell you. But yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because when we um, uh, put it out there, we we met and spoke on uh, a friend of ours, Ross Graham. We got him of Fohammer. We were on his 40th birthday the other night, uh, 40th birthday party the other night. And we were talking a little bit then that you'd been up until recently when working with large scale metal sculptures as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in art fabrication. Yeah. Yeah. And you've just now finally put that to bed and moved into this full time. That's right. Yeah. And that was a big move for me. It was uh, quite the leap of faith, I guess. Yeah. And as has the fear left or are you still carrying Yeah, it's it? gone. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So are you getting much of this done in, in the States as well? Are you of uh, running, um, running classes? Uh, so this was actually my first all oh, sculpting wow. workshop, um, which was a little bit of a doozy, you know, for the first one with 16 students and hosted by Cult of Pain. I was like, okay, don't mess this up. <laughs> but, uh, but I have teaching experience with ceramics. And so I, you know, I, I knew I could carry myself in a room of students, but it's very difficult when you're, the challenge is having the students see what you're doing because, okay, you know, you're making such small maneuvers, uh, everything's yeah. so little. But the real value of a, an in-person class is you get to go around to each student and you get to show them how to hold the tools and you get to, you know, help them manipulate it and really turn the light bulb on. And it, and it worked out really well. Mm. Um, yeah, but I'll, I have more workshops lined up in the States. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah. coming to Adepticon. Yep. I've got a couple of workshops at Adepticon and I'm going to be teaching in Nova uh, yeah. later in the year as well. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. We'll, be a, we'll, we'll sure we'll catch up with you there as well. Cause we'll be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool yeah. Too. Hey, so exciting. um, your main love then really space wolves yeah yeah and, and to be fair they are probably of the um the space marine chapters they are probably the one that lends themselves i think to probably the most converting and and adding things to i think isn't it yeah it's that great balance of fantasy and sci-fi yeah. i love the barbaric feel of them and i love sculpting organic things yeah it's just it just hits me good, you know, and, and I've, as I've started to dig into it and I started to post on Instagram, I re it really sunk in how passionate Space Wolf players are about that same feeling of oh. creating a mini that really hits you good. Well, I was, um, back in the, back in the day, I had a very brief run of playing, of having a Space Marine chapter that had no, had nothing attached to them of being, it just had painted the color I liked and off I went. And then third edition Space Wolf Codex came out, mm. and they you, uh, David Gallagher, yeah, yeah, and and they came out, and I was like, oh, they they look really cool, and they're a bit diff, they're, they're something you know, they're Marines, but not that Codex has such good illustrations in it. Yeah, I reference it all the time. It's it, and it was, and it was, and you say through the illustrations, it was where I really went, oh, hang on, there's something really different yeah. in these guys you know yeah you know even the cover you know sparks you go there's a guy with something akin to like a mohawk but big plaits and he's yeah. he's given an he's given an orc the end of an axe and it's yep. you know and it's a really <laughs> out in the snow and you think and i thought oh these these appeal but i think the um i think um the 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 sad thing has always been with them i think they um they've they're never quite but the illustrate and this has always been a thing with Games Workshop as as much as I love them, is the illustration never pushes the, the the miniature never quite pushes as far on as the illustration does, and I think, and I think if you if you had been a man of a different era, that I think I would have been, and, and you know, sadly before the days of Instagram, you'd I'd have been like this to you because, <laughs> although I still am because your work's amazing, but I think. You know, I wish someone was around then who was being able the ability to to go. This is how you do fair, and this is how you do that. But back yeah. then, it was because there was no there was no social media, there was no platforms like YouTube. You know, trying to get this information was really quite difficult. You know, mm -hmm. and I think I bought green stuff once, put a beard on a chaplain. It was a chaplain came with a motorbike, and then did that, painted it, and then thought, you know what, I will never, ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It didn't go very well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think, um, I think, I think the problem has been, I think, for the Space Wolves, I think they, um, 
the, the when Games Workshop do support them, it never pushes quite far enough. Yeah, for me. I mean, there's a balance, right? I mean, you have yeah. to. You're making minis that are easily paintable. You're making minis that can uh, survive the production process um, of the tooling that has to go into those steel molds for the injection yeah. molding process. And a lot of the details that I like to represent on the mini are not really. It wouldn't be cost effective to to try to pull that out of a mold and it and it mm. and it be successful. I think the sad thing was when I left 40k um, and left Space Wolves, they then did a, a really big Space Wolves sprue that had loads of really really cool stuff mm. on it, mm -hmm. and it even had like um, uh, chest plates that were really had covered in runes and things like that, and that was really good. And I thought, oh, it would come out when I've left, <laughs> <laughs> and then when I come back in, yeah. when it came back in, they, they, that had gone, you know, and yeah. you know, yeah. when me and my son were like trying to figure out what marine army he was going to get and at first he was like well i like them and you know and it's terrible you know when you think about how you how what you like but then you have to think about your your wallet as a parent oh, yeah. and my son was like I, space wolves are great and i was like the problem being is i'm going to be responsible for these and i know that i'm not very good at behaving myself with regards to i fall down rabbit holes too easy yeah and i thought all i was thinking was oh, every box of intercessors is 30 something pounds plus however many times I'm going to have to keep buying Space Wolf upgrade sprues to, to yeah, do, you to, know, to make so you go, look. every 10 Space Marines is going to cost me 50 quid or maybe 55 quid yeah, or however much because yeah. I thought I'll have to buy it every single time. You, you know? could, you know, sculpt them all out of green stuff. And, and well, yeah, yeah. that's one better. <laughs> convert them all. There you go. But, so I, I have a, a question about um, the sculpting. I, as, as I mentioned to yourself, I've, I've never tried any sculpting before previously mm -hmm. um and i think something interesting i guess with your ceramic background is working with your hands have you ever thought about in doing it in 3d sculpting in 3d yeah yeah i do sculpt in 3d oh amazing i just oh, wow. i don't really um forwardly advertise it but yeah, yeah i do i do push putty around digitally as well yeah yeah i went through a little little stint of game development in my spare time where I was yeah. creating characters uh, in ZBrush and working with CryEngine, trying to make my own atmosphere of something that you could run around in. And I, I learned quickly that I didn't want to learn any of the back-end stuff of game development, and I didn't yeah. want to hire anybody else to help me. Mm -hmm. So all I did was just make assets. I made a world, I you know set up the environment, and I yeah. left playing with you know all the, the time of day and sculpting all these characters and stuff and that's kind of just where it ended and i realized oh i i just want to create i i don't want to deal with coding or <laughs> yeah. programming and all Fair. that kind of stuff so yeah 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 yep. so we shouldn't shouldn't anticipate a uh a valbjorn no space wolf, <laughs> space wolf stl pack in the future <laughs> oh uh, i mean that could absolutely be a thing yeah yeah i mean i have been messing around with that and also um sculpting my own bits and then having them cast oh yeah um yeah i'm i'm thinking about all that stuff oh, exciting. yeah yeah because yeah. peter one of our pals from youtube pete the war gamer mm -hmm. he's recently released oh, his dead own, animal bits yeah dead mm, animal bits yeah. yeah he did his own first pack and we'd been very kind enough he showed us we were visiting the artist opus factory and uh he brought them along and showed us some of the bits from them, and I was really impressed at how mm -hmm. how good they are. You know, to think to be like some starting something that small on your own, you know, and yeah, and you go starting something small on your own, and then you go, oh, actually, there's something that hasn't got the backing of an enormous company behind it. He was really, really impressed how good it was, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, something something else that I mean, like looking at that uh, miniature that you brought, mm -hmm. brought with us, which I'll I'll. I got a 360 off, so we'll imagine it spinning around as our, as our viewers yeah. will be able to see it. Um, say like a beard, for example. I, I guess sure. this is coming very much from like a novice perspective. Like when you're going into learning or sculpting a beard, how how do you go about scaling it down so it still reads as a beard, but mm -hmm. then is also... Like, I, I, I'm so stupid, I can't even phrase the question. <laughs> yeah. um, like, how do you make something look like a Veers um, yeah. at that scale? Um, yeah. Like, with the tools that you have, like, what's 
I guess, yeah, what's the process and the thought process? Yeah, and, well, you know. references. Yeah. And you've got a really good one right on your own face there, buddy. <laughs> uh, but it comes down to, and this is a lot of my sculpting process, comes down to the way that you're holding your hands and the repetition of marks and letting them all build on themselves. I don't, I, I always tell my students, don't try to sculpt every single hair. Mm. Build up those marks and build up it's almost like a proxy mark where one mark will influence the next. And when you put your beard on, you do it in regions. You think about the sides. This part protrudes a little bit. The mustache comes off. It's not just about the texture on it, but it's about the hairline. How does it look from the side and the silhouette? Yeah. And once you get your your hands set up in such a way and you build that hairline out, it starts to, each little mark starts to create these, these fine little... Uh, indentations that start building on each other and then when you start to and as the putty hardens because you have a timeline when you mix up epoxy putty starts soft gets hard so those softer marks at the beginning of the the mix are fresh yeah they're soft and fresh and as you work in and it starts to stiffen and you move the whole thing all those fresh marks move together um, and it creates a very yeah. naturalistic looking flow yeah yeah and you know, when that metal music's blaring in the headphones <laughs> and it's a, it's a flow state type yeah. of thing. It's a meditative thing for me to, to really get into the zone and, and feel it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's magic, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's so cool. Like, I'm listening, I'm listening to you describe that and I'm like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just repetition of the motion. Yeah. 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 Do you think beads, um, do you think, Beards read better on a miniature for if the miniature's um, in motion. Do you think no, like a no? It it you can, I mean yeah, it's cool when something's flowing. Yeah, but you can do a you can do a a stagnant yeah know, kind of just like really stoic looking. You know, he's standing there. Yeah, I think to myself like you know if I'm sticking a hairdryer to my beard in the morning and it just like splits down the middle. Yeah. yeah I just look really stupid. Yeah. But, yeah, um, maybe, not, maybe, but imagine, maybe, you know, maybe, space marine beards all stay in one over the shoulder <laughs> yeah. and everything down there. But maybe you've been riding that bike, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see the guy on the, when he steps off the bike and there's just bugs all the <laughs> and it's, Yeah. I've got one guy on a uh, Thunder Wolf that I did. Yeah. Um, and he has the split beard and I imagined him as one of those bikers where it's like that he's just on that wolf <laughs> riding and his beard's being split open by the wind yeah yeah so oh okay cool I feel I feel less self-conscious about my own <laughs> my own split beard now yeah. yeah so you see we talk about space marines gain self-confidence there you go so I go to space marines the um yet I uh I, th I sometimes think that the problem must be as well when you you Sculpting a beard is 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 thinking about how long it relatively compared to the face that it's got to sort of you know because the thing is with beards is obviously the further out of the way they get from your face they generally become thinner all of the yeah because up here you know from being mm -hmm. being a barber yeah know, I, I deal with them day in day out but so that thing of I'm sort of going well I've got to remember where the chin is. For that yeah. sense of coming away for the and if you, you know. can see the bottom lip or not is his yeah. mouth open all yeah. that kind of stuff and if you mix your putty in the right ratio you can keep adding continuous layers you don't have to do it all in one shot yeah and if you look at a lot of the beards that i've done the space marines have this gorget that goes around the front of their chest armor and i, I very rarely break that line where i don't really do beards that are mass like I think of that more of as a dwarven beard that comes yeah, down. Yeah. And those have their place and it's a stylistic thing. Mm -hmm. But if you create an impactful little beard, you know, it, it, that's sitting inside there, it's it's just as cool, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I think even Space Wolves, um, if we pretend they're real for a moment. Um, pretend they're not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew you were both going to get the point about that once. I knew, I knew it was coming. Um, this is a you, documentary. <laughs> You know, they drill the barrels so the bullets can get out. That's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, if you don't drill your barrels, you can only you can only roll on you can only hit on a six. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but even them would have to, if you think about the fact that obviously a lot of the space wolves look their most impactful when they don't have a helmet on. Yeah, that's obviously. What I've got the biggest at. bits been of helmets. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I just tell you what's going on anyway. Like, I'd love to see <laughs> the beards where. Space Wolf has put a helmet on and it's just got like trapped. I should yeah. Do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't realize that. the beard at the bottom of the thing, helmet. isn't it? You think even no matter how cool a beard looks on a Space Wolf, even they would have to go, I can't have it that long because it's still got to fit 
in the times they do have to wear a helmet in yeah, you curly yeah, up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Curly up. Like, you know one of the things you know although there is you know, there is exceptions on on religious grounds and and sometimes people's skin but in the military you can't have a beard mm -hmm. and one of the reasons they give you for saying you you can't have a beard is if the beard is too big the seal of your respirator gas mask won't won't fit let you me know? tell you a little something about space wolves yeah they don't care <laughs> <laughs> she's like if i put that that iron warriors one on it's just i just have it's the comedy beard sits out the bottom of it so i think you're right that to go with what you're saying about not going past the gorget it's a it's a good safety mark of when to yeah. stop isn't it really yeah. you know but then again some of them have really really long plaques do they do they princess layer them up like you know it they just rolls on the sides of the head before they put the helmet on. They just hold their breath in space. <laughs> yeah. They just yeah. Go, yeah. I am not wearing a helmet. That's right. No matter what. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Rules just, cool. You know, how yeah. long it took me to plait this hair and comb this beard. I'm not putting a helmet on. Nah. If, if you're a barbarian enough, you can breathe in space. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that's that's how, that's the rule. There's, there's an just, next slogan they, for our next run of t-shirts. If yeah. you're barbarian enough, you can breathe in space. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. So... Do you uh, sculpt many other things other than space walls? Have you um, the other things that takes your fancy within? Yeah, games I've been, workshop and non games workshop ranges. Yeah, so I do toy around with doing some digital sculpting, um, and it's mostly figural stuff. Um, yeah, working with anatomy and just making full figures in there, uh, just to you know practice. And I am working on some few full scratch built pieces. Oh, excellent! Yeah, that are that are kind of, you know, in the secret chamber, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. And, and like my, my bird here, I, you know, I'm very influenced by nature and yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I love that bird. So it's, cool. it's so, it's really, really impressive. The, um, how hard did you find, um, cause we have, or I'll, I'll mention them in a second. We, how hard did you find moving from epoxy over into digital? Did you find it a real, um, did you, did, was it like a real, having to retrain the brain? It was having a traditional background and in, in moving material around, I think gives you a big advantage to, to going into digital because you, you have a sense of the weight of things and of how gravity affects things. And um, yeah, it, it happened rather quickly. I think a lot of the, the, um, the difficulty of sculpting digitally is the initial uh, kind of curve of learning the program it's yeah. it's less about trying to express yourself and rather about how okay what are these buttons do what are, what's all the menus do like it's yeah a zbrush in particular is it it's just a mess of uh ui but once you once it clicks you're like oh okay i see why it's laid out like this hmm. it's just not as conventional as other programs yeah it's definitely a curve isn't it like i, I remember learning after effects mm. a few years ago and just yeah the learning like, curve yeah like oh but Usually the arrow keys means go forward a frame and go back a frame, but now that means something else completely different. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I think one of the ones of, of people we had on the show who who made that leap and seemed to make that leap um, really comfortably was we had Bob Naismith on. Mm, yeah, yeah, you know we had in fact Bob been on twice, and you know, and and you know, there's always that thing where it's easy to go, oh well, you know older people don't use computers you know and a man who'd spent so long sculpting in the traditional sense mm -hmm. but he's absolutely knocking it out the park now yeah. he's moved over to digital and he's just thinking mm -hmm. and he and he was like you he seemed to just find that going from working like this to this yeah seems to just be naturally sort of pushed through and it didn't he seemed to bob sort of took it when he spoke about it very much just in his stride that it moving across and he think yeah it, I think it must be if the sculptor's in you, it's in you no matter what way you work, I suppose. Yeah, once you get past that learning curve of the initial UI of the program, then it really clicks in your brain and you're like, okay, there is no gravity. I can just move things wherever I want. I can, like with traditional sculpting, the, when you make a mark in something, it's displaced somewhere. You push mm -hmm. into it and then that has to go somewhere. Yeah. In, in the digital realm, you can just use the trim tool and slice something off. And it just disappears into into space. You can sculpt something out, and it doesn't. You don't have to hit that right perfect timeline or have an armature inside. Yeah, and set up all these steps. But knowing how to set those steps up really makes you appreciate those things, and it makes them a little bit more meaningful. And you start to make decisions that are based on 
that that experience. Yeah. Um, and I think you can tell the difference a lot of times. And you know, the, between someone who does have a traditional background that does move into digital, they make decisions, I think, a little differently. That's very so sculpting traditionally and going into digital, you you bring your you bring skills with you. Do you think does it have any reverse? Do you anything oh, you learn sure in di- in digital going back? Do you, do you pick anything up digitally sculpting that you goes backwards to going back to epox? Yeah, as well? I'm sure it does. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Um, something I definitely wanted to ask you about as well was was initially looking at your Instagram. I see all of these minute details in green stuff, but also the the kit bashing element of yeah of your work. And one that really took me by surprise. Um, and I, I, again, I think this is coming from my sort of lack of experience of, of kit bashing and all that sort of stuff. Um, seeing a, uh, maybe four or five models on a 360 and you were like, these are all assault intercessors. Yeah. Like they have the same legs and the same torso. And I was just like, uh, what? <laughs> right. And, and this chap on the table is right. an assault intercessor. You were saying he is. And, yeah. and just, I guess I'm just like flabbergasted um that they're all the same model but you can get so much out of it yeah you um, really can and how how did you go about discovering that or playing around with with that sort of stuff yeah so my first real when when i was a kid and i was buying action figures the ones you could pose mm. what i was oh these are so cool i can finally pose them in the way i want yeah and i would spend out like just so long setting up little scenes of posing them and understanding where to put like how to make the make it look like there's actually a guy in there yeah um and finding that right golden angle and the right camera angle to take the shots um it's the pose is everything man it's it's yeah. just a lot of times like you'll think okay the feet are like this so they have to go on the base like this well if like this guy in particular, his model is running forwards. Yeah, you tip him backwards, and then you put one of his one of his legs up, and now he's stoically cresting a mountaintop. Yeah, and the same mini could be the same thing in the same pose. You tip him forward and move his arms a little bit, and you have a completely different feel. Yeah, um, and so it's kind of about just feeling that moment that you want to put them in, and uh, yeah, imagine a little man in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also really enjoy, um, I guess, what could be a very, very complex answer, but then you say, just imagine they're real. It like, really, yeah, yeah, it, it really be boils down to, to, to feeling it. Yeah. it you have to, re- it's working in the round. Look at the mini from all angles. Look at how, you know, if you tip him backwards, how does that change the way you feel about it? Yeah. If you add different arms or even just, you know, the, the turn of the head is so important. Like, mm. Think about where the spine goes down and it, like if you have someone sitting there and his head's jutting forward or if you have someone sitting there and his head's backwards and his shoulders are forward, like how does that change the way you feel about it? Yeah. Yeah. It really... It's so much more like character and emotion and right. all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, if someone's hunched over, you'd be like, oh, they're old and grumpy. And right. <laughs> this, that, and the other. And yeah, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. The kit bashing element is something I really, really love. Yeah. So what... So, it is say say with this chap for example yeah was what was your thought process in creating it was it like kit bash first and then the green stuff afterwards or a mixture of both or with him in particular it was a really slow burn because i was letting each decision i make influence the next i yeah. didn't really and i don't usually have a set plan of what i'm going for but it does usually boil down to the pose that i find first yeah and he was one of my first minis that I did where it is in more of um, an illustrative kind of almost heroic pose because mm. most of the minis I did before him were more action, something grabbed out of an action scene or something where it, where this is more like, oh, you know, the yeah. heroic, you know, yeah. I'm on the mountaintop, you know, yeah. that, that type of feeling. He reminds me of is, uh, have you ever seen Gladiator? Yeah. Well, you know, when uh, at the beginning when they're fighting the Germans... Mm. And the emissary has come back beheaded, and then they start to hear the noise of them all. Yeah. And there was this enormous chieftain comes out first, speaking in some variants of Germanic. Yeah. And he's 
giving it big ones with the accents, got big long hair and the pelts yeah. and all the rest of this. Like exactly. that sort of rallying call to get ready. It's about to go. You get a real feel of that with him, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's a really, really nice pose to be fair, man. Thank you. And how do you know when, I must be challenging, like I, I, I something I struggle with my own, with my own painting is, is knowing when to stop. Ah, uh, yes. And how, how do you find that in the kit bashing and sculpting? Have you ever done something where you're like, oh, that was too far maybe or yeah i mean even this mini in particular right here sometimes i think maybe i put a little bit too much on there yeah there is there's a balance there you don't want to litter the entire mini with too much detail that's going to obscure you know that balance of you know your negative space and mm. your know, visual noise of your details and yeah all that kind of stuff yeah yeah so something i i, I we played around we got a 3d printer recently and and we played around with um some 3d bits Mm. Uh, making some black templars and and something I I was like I, I guess something that a lot of people do um, I've seen it before in in climbing where you you know if indoor climbing you you have your root setters and you're sort of like I've got the drill and the bolts and the holds I can go crazy mm. but really you shouldn't like it, the hard bit is controlling yourself I think so like with the 3D bits I was like <gasps> every shoulder pad and the helmet can be different and the backpack can be different and this gun and that gun and I was like oh it doesn't look like a space for me really anymore. Yeah. Um I think it's quite I find it quite challenging. I guess it comes with time like controlling myself. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times and especially with this particular kit that I like to work with the assault intercessors or just mm. the primaris marines they're very easy to bring down to a blank canvas. Mm. They they aren't they don't have a ton of detail on them and it's easy to remove a lot of that detail. And I like to dial back that detail so I can add my own on. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll cover up the the button panels on the sides just so it's not taking away from the thing that I want to put next to it. Yeah. It doesn't all have to be completely resolved to the to that highest degree. Oh, okay. So yeah. Very the, interesting. The nice thing as well with some of the um some of the earlier assault intercessors, they had them really nice long plates on the on their forearms yeah the only which were carrying the indomitus campaign or crusade right. badge on yeah one side as well so they gave that a slightly more knightly look of of marines because obviously as you say generally there is normally a couple of buttons going on and yeah and, and then they did them with these like forearm plates which i thought was a i thought was a bit it was a bit of a shame that they did them for for some of them they go oh you should have kept them going i quite liked them and they were like mm. oh they were more I think for that box, you know, and it was, mm. but yeah, they were really, really cool. Yeah. The question it leads me into, because when I started with Space Marines, which they were in Mark 8 armor, and they were, um, I think it was Jez Goodwin's real first push at what are basically, you know, the template for the newer sort of Marine that we now use. They were obviously um, multi-part, and there seems to mm. be this argument a bit at the moment in amongst people who played it all the way back then and still play or paint and collect now is is it better to be multi-part and do what you want or leaning into the fact that the way sculpting is now done and creates such amazing poses that it, we should accept a, a, a miniature that can only go together virtually really speaking one way mm. over the ability to do what you want and it's like because obviously when you could do what you want you could swap the arms around but you the dynamicness for the average for the average pay, uh, painter collector builder would come to a bit of a a bit of a dead end whereas what games workshop doing now like you know if take consideration the the phobos lieutenant who's jumping through the air with the blade in in the air and yep. he's going to go and you go well that's you know, Games Workshop never used to make anything that could remotely look like that. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, <clears throat> but you had the versatility of building your own Marines versus this. And I think, where do you sit on it? Where do you think, it, what do you think is the better option to have something so really impressively done by the company or the ability to sort of have access to putting them together yourself? Yeah. Well, the Grey Hunter kit was kind of what I... The Grey Hunter kit and the Space Wolf Terminator or the Wolf Guard Terminator kit were my first two Space Wolf kits, and they're all somewhat multi-part. Well, the yeah. Grey Hunter kit was very multi-part. And um, then when the Primaris came out, they were a little bit more monopose. When yeah. The way that the legs would sock it up in, it would be, yeah. okay, the legs are just going to go like this. You, you can't really rotate them. 
And for me, it was a challenge. I liked to cut up the limbs in my own way and then re-sculpt the armor seals. And I know that that's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, and I really don't know how to answer that question because it's a, it, that's a quite a balance between how far do you want to go with your kit bash? How far do you want to go with sculpting on your mini? Um, but I have enjoyed working with, uh, the kits as a challenge of if you're going to give me a mini that can only be posed one way, I'm going to cut it up and make my own. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. Cause I always found whenever I've talked about this with, with people is they go, but I could, I could put my Marines together my own way when they were multi-part mm -hmm. and you go that's true <clears throat> and when i played most people play marines and you go well i put him in this cool pose but then when you put him down against your mate you realize he's done exactly the same pose anyway because <laughs> you know you know the, 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 you know without breaking out the bone saw and breaking out the green stuff there was only so many variants of even though they were all multi-part there's only so many variants right. of how you could get it yeah to there's go, still you know? the there's still a rotation of the of the limbs that yeah. you kind of have to adhere to unless you're going to change that angle and then redo the arm seat. you know like um, i said that you know back in back then games workshop um we lived in the the the, the world of being a lot of plastic and metals mm -hmm. and you used to be able to go to warhammer world and they have a catalog of just all of the metal parts and all of the sprues and you could just go through it and go just filled out an order form and handed it in and they would go away and come back with it yeah or they go well we haven't got any of them but if you give us a week we'll we'll do some well there used to be a metal pointing arm for um the heavy weapons uh sergeant yeah yeah it was just sort of like this and yeah and, and um the same the, exactly the same arm was also on a really cool marine with a mohawk who had which was quite unusual back then had no aquila just a skull and crossbones over one side and he had a again not something you see a lot a bolster on a sling mm -hmm. and they had it down there and he was pointing them, but it was exactly the same arm i must have bought that arm about 10 times yeah yeah everybody was pointing <laughs> <laughs> yeah see so, yeah. everybody wanted someone to take notice of what they were worried about yeah and you know i had it described to me recently i think it was a painter called chris frozen who was like oh the pull my finger point yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> the one i was always sad is that they never um they they, they always um they always do them like this and um when I was in the military, we were always point. We always taught to point with a full hand mm. because sometimes if you're wearing a dark glove, you, and you because you use you use hand signals. Yeah. Sometimes if it's dark, trying to figure out that there's a single finger out. Uh -huh. Oh, so just it's like a fist instead. It stands. could be a fist, yeah. and, you know. Okay. And a lot of people who went off, there's a place in Wales called Brecon Beacons, which is where you 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 do your training, and it's called the Brec. I mean, when you go there, when you learn to hold your combat, to push men about, it gets known as that. Get full hand gets known as a Brecon point. Because every... there is a marine with a there's the marine with point. a full hand. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. So they they've sent a marine on uh, they've they've sent a marine on the uh, on the British Army Junior NCOs course up in Brecon. Then obviously, oh, it was <laughs> yeah. or at least one of the sculptors. Okay. Yeah, one yeah. of the sculptors yeah. has gone. Oh, we'd like to have one of them Brecon pointing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's as inter like an interesting like tidbit into like the history of of an. Yeah, yeah, you on know, the military side of things. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they cool still have a, just a big glowing thing on the inside of the hand because at the end of the day, Marines don't care who can see them, do they? <laughs> no, they, they, yes, I'm stealthing into battle in Terminator Arbor. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah this like scouts, I always thought of as like, oh yeah, scouting ahead and doing this oh, rocket launcher. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a shotgun. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, this, this used to be a, this used to be a tower. This used to be a thing. And this would probably go in third edition of um, in the third edition. Space Wolf scouts could come on from the back of the opponent sides of the table, and they could be led by um, wolf guards who were wolf guards were essentially sergeants, and you could detach one. And wolf guards had their entire own armory. Mm. of what they could be done with so you could have scouts coming on from the back of the board with their wolf guard leader who was in terminator armor and you're going that that's just doesn't surprise. make any sense whatsoever that's a nice it? surprise <laughs> could you imagine them just going Shh. <laughs> very very good yeah so you know I, I was never i never took to that i was just going to just i know i know it's like a a loophole that you can do that but i've never <laughs> never read right to me yeah. teleport chamber man yeah that's it yeah yeah you walk i'll meet you there <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah they can do can't they so um for myself as an example yeah. um i i'm looking to try some sculpting um you know i've 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 heard you talk about 
heavy metal and pushing putty around and it sounds like a form of meditation and i'm really psyched yeah um what are some of the i guess a what what tools and equipment would i need to do what do you recommend uh and what would be like a good starter sculpt to help like build my confidence well i like to start at the beard (laughs) (laughs) um a nice putty mix that i is a really general mix that I feel like works really well for a lot of things is mixing green stuff with Milliput 50-50. Yeah. Uh, green stuff has this rubbery quality to it that doesn't really like to feather out over a surface. And you can get it to blend, but it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And Milliput's on the other side of that spectrum where it's almost like butter. It, you hit it with water. It's water-soluble. It wants yeah. to break down. Mixing them together, you kind of blend those properties, get the best of both worlds. So you can build out things in layers and think about those layers don't think like you have to get it right on that first shot yeah um, as far as tools go uh i recommend just a cocktail stick or a toothpick to start out that's yeah. kind of how i got my start with sculpting hair um and then you want to when you want to start getting a little bit more refined get some bamboo picks and sharpen the points down a little bit compress the ends so you don't see any wood grain yeah um yeah and just start pushing it around organic organic textures and volumes or are, are looser and so you can have a little bit more freedom there yeah um, also mixing in milliput with your green stuff is going to make it cure hard yeah so if you want to refine after it's cured you can go back and then do a little scraping if you want add more putty on later oh, okay yeah. yeah yeah so would um would sculpt would you say sculpting mechanical uh elements like like the axe on this chap or mm-hmm. is that harder do you have to be more precise it's just about or? following different steps yeah it's not necessarily harder it's just setting yourself up to create a flat plane yeah being patient getting a good adhesion to the brass rod waiting then refining it when it's hard refining it like you would metal yeah oh, yeah don't don't worry about getting it exactly perfect in its soft form because those marks are going to represent soft material wait for it to cure and then sand and file it down to refine it that's why you see a lot of traditional sculpts that are made in clay and Fimo and Sculpey. Yeah. All of the hard, like if they do horns or or the sword, it's usually done in Milliput. And that's what that yellow putty is mm. it's because Milliput will cure rock hard and you can then sand it to represent those hard materials. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Polymer clay is not as sandable or fileable once it's cured. It's it's kind of a plasticky yeah. once it's baked. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like... Um, I feel like I'm such an idiot. You're like, you know, but it's, it's such a, like, it's, I guess going through that that learning process of being like, hey, like, if it's natural, treat it like it's a natural thing. If yeah. It, if it is a metal, like, because it, 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 you talking about forming an axe, like, mm-hmm. I've watched tons of, of YouTube videos about, like, a blacksmith, and, and he's not getting it right on the first go. Right. And he's removing material afterwards and sanding it down to get the really great finish and that's all possible that, with putty and that's exactly what you're doing as well that's right yeah just in a very very tiny scale with a different material but treating yeah. it treating it like it's real treating it like there's a guy inside yeah right yeah i exactly. mean not in the axe obviously but <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah oh that's so cool um so, yeah i have a youtube video that's that's free that you can yeah check out you know how to sculpt a beard or viking beard in yeah. there to get you started yeah when you want to when you want to jump into the patreon i call <laughs> I, I call i can't watch that because next thing you know i'll have a space wolf army and everyone will have a beard and you know and I mean, maybe i'll never like out the a, house ever again do a kill team <laughs> maybe maybe, kill maybe team. do a kill team yeah. that might be the way yeah that might be quite fun yeah, yeah. Or like get get the hounds of morkai and might do some scouts but yeah that's the, my friends is a lot like yourself in the fact that my 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 mate um if it can be made by himself he will n- make it himself he's not going to go out and buy it mm-hmm. it's like you know it's like i was like oh you know i'm going to build this thing he, he plays guard well one of his armies is guard and he goes needs some sandbags and i was going oh wait you, I, and i'm like tell me your thing to so i'm not paying for them i can just mold them i'll just make them i'll just yeah sculpt them myself and then it's like um and then he did um, a lot of the the because he does uh, Steel Legion. A lot of the bases he's done them very much like Second World War, so there'll be like buildings have collapsed nearby and stuff. And all of the brickwork, yeah, he's, he just bought a, a cast, sure, and just started making his own. He went, oh, wait, I'm not going to keep paying for this. He says, well, I can just make it myself. And yeah, you know, and he's just he's really you know. And I'm one of those people who go, 
No, I'd rather dent my bank account because that terrifies me. Well, it's and a balance it, with time. Too, yeah, right? and, yeah, and I'm like, you know, just the thought of it. And he's like, no, I'll just, you yeah. know, he's really like, you know, because he bought that um, that stuff that came out, you know, the um, the stuff that you could, was malleable in hot water that you could then press into oh, right. to make, you know, and, yeah. and then he started to go. Well, type of plastic. Yeah, and he's like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to. I'll just press that in there, press it in there. You make a mold, do that, and do it myself. I'm not, you know, I'm not spending that money. You know, it's like, yeah. I think if, you know. Very good. Is there anything in your day-to-day -day that you, like, can't live without? In my day? In terms of uh, sculpting, sorry, like in your kit bashing or what have you, you're just like, oh, these are really good. Like, from chatting to Pete, he he said, like, Pete the War Gamer, he's, he swears by silicon-tipped, like, mm. tools. Yeah, those are useful. Yeah. Um, my favorite kit bashing tool is the Tamiya Fine Craft Saw. I yeah. love that thing. It's You buy it as a sheet, as a photo-etched steel sheet that has these little saws that you fold over. And when people get them, yeah. they're like, what is this? Is this even a saw? But they're <laughs> 0.1 millimeter thin. Wow. You put them in your hobby handle and it lets you, if you want to extract something from a kit, you can cut off a spike and, and save it. You can remove two things and have both halves. Yeah. And that, that was a huge game changer for me when it came to kit bashing. Um, as far as sculpting, I have my own tools that I make. I, I, I feel like eventually once you get into your own style of sculpting, everybody kind of ends up making their own tools. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I have my own tool kit. Um, but yeah, I use ba my bamboo picks a lot for sculpting hair. Those are, yeah. those are near and dear. But uh, yeah. Okay, so what are... Uh what are some tools that you've made yourself? I make all, I make all my bamboo picks. Yeah. I cut them from skewers just by bamboo skewers. Even, I like the kinds with the the, gr the green still on them. Yeah. Bamboo's very flexible wood. And it's not just about having a sharp point. I really, I like that really long wispy point. Um, but yeah, I, I turn them down and then polish the ends and uh, use those for all my fur and hair sculpting. Yeah. As well as steel tools that I hammer out. And, and they splay out and then I'll refine those down into in different shapes for what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I sell those in my workshops. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any spaces on your Adepticon workshop? Uh, there you? aren't. No, oh. yeah. I've heard all the classes sold out like insanely fast. Yeah, Adepticon's, yeah. Always, it always goes really quickly because it's such a huge gathering of people. Yeah. Everybody wants to get in those classes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I I would love to come back to the UK and do more workshops. So I'll let you guys know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, that, is, that sounds amazing. I'd be well keen. Um, and um, like projects wise for yourself, um, like what, what are you working on at the moment? Um, I've been working on a Terminator for quite a while. I work really slowly. Uh, yeah. Uh, once I finish up this Terminator, I'll move over to Scouts. I'm excited about all the new Scout kits and yeah. seeing what I can do with those. And I, I've had a Scout that I've also had on the back burner that I haven't showed anyone yet. Um, oh, fun! That, yeah, I love Space Wolf Scouts. They they are elite. They're an elite unit. Most Scouts are. You become a Scout, then you become That's an right. Astartes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Space Wolves, it's the opposite. They're the other. They're the old men that don't want to be around anybody. Oh, they just want to cool. go out. They yeah. do their own thing. They're much more in tune with the wilderness as idea, isn't it? You know, they're like trackers. Yeah, yeah, and I love that vibe. Um, did you, um, you see, I always thought it was a terrible shame because when I got into playing Space Wolves, they were just coming to their end where they, they'd never been enough of them and they weren't making any more, was the original Space Wolf Scouts. Mm. The ones where they had, um, they had, a, they had one who, if you, those who, who know 2000 AD have very much looked like slain. He had the massive big spiked hair. Yeah. And um, and then there was another one with a mohawk with two really massively big long plaits with a sword in there. But they were all done in like quilted suits. Like they were they were dressed for the winter. Mm -hmm. And they were really cool. And I thought, oh, these are so great. You know, I got in, I thought, right, well, there's, they only made something like three or four of them. Okay. And I was, so there wasn't even enough for a squad. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, they're cool. And then... Then they they, they 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 replaced them with new Space Wolf Scouts, which I think were made by Mike McVeigh. And they leaned into, which was cool, they leaned into them being older looking men, but they were very, very spindly compared to mm. the last lot and also 
um, normal Space Marines. And then they went, and then it was just like, now it's just generic scout. Yeah, you yeah. get paint, I, I paint through Space Wolf color, and you go, they haven't even got the right hair, you know. Yeah. You know, okay. and it was a real shame, but I think... Um, so there'll be some some serious, like, he like, head swaps to get some more wrinkles in the, yeah. in the foreheads and beards and, yeah. Well, the, the new ones are really, the new ones are really, the new scouts are really, really nice, and... Um, I'm in a bit of a quandary at the moment because I've just I've only put together the specialists, but their bolters on the for the new scouts are very much like a standard bolter. A lot of them have got a sling, but then the bolters that are on the Black Templar sprue for mm. their uh, yeah, near fights. their near fights, they've got like this smaller sort of slightly special forces looking bolter, mm. and it's like oh, because I've got enough arms, do I still go with them or do I use the bigger looking chunkier one? It's like oh, you know, can't because the other one I really love is the one for the Reavers where they've got that really small, they've got a front hand grip on there, yeah, which is it. unconventional for the forty k, yeah, type yeah, of, of bolter, yeah, yeah. The idea is that you know, Marines grasp should be enough that he can just grab hold of it and they're not yeah. having to do this, you know, but yeah, and it's like you know, and and the, some of the shotguns are a bit different as well, but um, it's a bit of a tough one with scouts because you think if you don't play Black Templars, you don't really worry about that. Right. But once you've got all of that, that you go, you know, what, what, where do I go? Yeah. And I've got a big question. Yeah. You're hired tomorrow to become a sculptor for a games workshop. Right. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow. Okay. You're already here, so you can just start straight away. It's yeah. No problem. Uh -huh. Might have to cancel that plane ticket back. They're not going to let you space wall. They're not going to let you sculpt the space walls. What would you want them to let you sculpt? Oh, if I had to do something else besides space walls, and I yeah. had to do it for GW. Yeah. Maybe Eldar Exodites. Oh wow. That's a good shot. I did. That's not where I thought you were going to go. I'm quite impressed. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of the barbaric Eldar. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really do like Kroot. Do you know those oh, are. Well, I'm a. Well, this has been a bit of a thing because. They you, all the little dogs. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. has been a bit of a thing because I, um, I, I had the very beginnings of a Tau army back when they first came out. And, um, and it never really went anywhere. And I always thought they were okay. Mm -hmm. And the crew were cool. But, you know, there was never enough of them to get majorly interested in them. And then when we were at LVO and they announced um, the crew were coming back. And I was like, even if I don't have them as an army, I've, so cool. I've got to have them as a combat They patrol. did a great job. Oh, the um, yeah. the one that I keep going back to is the younger, um, the, the, the ones riding the crew top. Mm. And there is one of them where the crutox is the only thing that's on the base is the crutox is knuckles of one hand and everything yeah. else is is raised up. He's and the really moving. And yeah, and the crute that's on him is obviously really enjoying it because he's like got a <laughs> rifle in the air. He's like, go on, go on. Yeah, I think they're. Um, and then they announced another. They showed another miniature yesterday. Yeah, uh, the crute loads. Yeah, he's spear like on, throwing the explosive yeah, spear. Yeah, yeah, or you can have him on another one where they've got him where he's got the rifle. He's holding the the rifle like this and he's looking through a. Through a uh, telescope, and I thought, yeah. oh, again, really, I think the new crew range. Uh, I hope, I hope Games Workshop doesn't do them dirty. I hope they give them all of the tools they require to be a, a com an army that works on its own. You know, yeah, I think I, cool. I don't, I think it'd be, you know, if you're going to start, way you don't have to play Tower, right? Yeah, but that's why the Xbox have to play Tower. I, I, I've got a, I quite like the, I quite like the design of the Tower. The only thing, if I was someone said, you know, you can change, and I think, can we change the heads on the Crisis suits a bit? I can't. On the, really? Yeah, on the, I'm not quite sure about them, but other than that, I don't mind. I don't mind how I think manga is such a an anime and and mech is such a big part of science fiction. The fact that Games Workshop eventually leaned into it, I was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. But the crew are just, yeah, just they're, such they're a special, lovely, such a lovely part yeah. of it. And you think, I now need to see you've got to release some sort of large monster with an enormous tank killing gun on the back of it, mm -hmm. so that they can be a. a fully fledged army in their own right you know but oh, yeah. some heavy weapons yeah something yeah. really really big because they used to have one i think forge world made it, like, uh, i think uh, i can't was a narlock or something like that and they used to have like a really like big t-rex type thing that which had like two or three people on the back of it and they had like quite a big gun and stuff mm -hmm. so it'd be like yeah that in plastic please would be would be nice but the new crew are if i had to choose marines though it would be night lords 
do love a night lord. Yeah, yeah. True renegade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love the idea that they were. I love the idea that Slide the Chaos didn't make much difference because they were all horrible <laughs> yeah. and bonkers before that. Yeah, they don't <laughs> care. There's probably yeah. some people in the night lords don't even know it's happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. They're just like business as usual. Yeah, yeah. just beds and civilians. Yeah, that's fine. What, what <laughs> do you think your approach would be uh, to to kit bashing and sculpting your own night lord? Um, well, I've done a few. Oh, oh wow! Really? Yeah, they're they're further back on my profile, but uh, I'm looking at that right now. I'm so yeah. sorry. I, I mean, they're you know they're pretty heavy metal, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of lots of torn flayed skin, and I did one guy with uh, I nailed a couple of hands on the top of his <laughs> power pack. Yeah, I called him Jago Jazz Hands. And, um, <laughs> but um, I, yeah, it's a great opportunity for all that kind of organic type stuff, real brutal looking. Uh, I think brains. the night. I think um, I think uh, Pete's Dead Animal Bits kit is a really good kit for the Night Lords because that's got like hands on nails and things on it and stuff. Yeah. Well, I think when we've got all that, the one, the thing I really loved about the new um, about the the Night Lords coming out and the kill team was that when you make an add-on sprue that good, that when you see the the miniatures photographed, you almost forget that that was a a standard Chaos Marine kit. Oh yeah, yeah you know what I mean. When you look at yeah. it and go, oh, they're and you go, oh, well, that's just a normal kit, but with bits on, you know, yeah, you yeah. know, you've really nailed it. I think. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, they've done some. They've done some. Um, they've done some really, really good work with it. Oh, are you amazing! You're a Night Lord Demon Prince. Yeah, oh, Jesus, these are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and the Night Lords they they frown on on chaos. Uh, you know, possession. Mm, yeah, you, you kind of become alien alienated to you know your war band in some way. We're, yeah, we're talking about that. Well, then we're talking about this. The Iron Warriors are the same. Aren't the any bit of tentacle starts to come out and they go, yeah, that's going. That's got to go. Got to, yep. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Uh, they don't lean into it particularly. Yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. I love that. I mean, yes, your um, is, oh, the face you've sculpted on one of these guys is like terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Who blocks like, the camp at? Oh, 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 more goose pictures. That, that's overheated. Uh, I have one camera that always overheats, so that's I put it on good. myself. Well, I'm now like, you don't have to put a, a photograph of goose up. You can use that miniature that Games Workshop did and just put that up instead. Oh, yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, I can really see, like, the, yeah, I guess, like, the, the kind of barbarian brutishness. Like, he's got a two-handed chain sword? Yeah. Chain spear, something or other? Like, like chain glaive. Yeah. Yes. Ah, oh, there we go. Glaive. Yes, that's the word. My knowledge of uh, of weaponry isn't um, the most exceptional. He's got a two handed stabby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and all the chains and the skulls and the yeah. oh, yanks. Oh. And reading the Night Lords trilogy by uh, ADB was yeah big, big yeah for me. Oh, I love it. I yeah. I listened to the audio book, um, and I I listened to the first one, and I was like, oh, I. I you know, I don't know how, how am I going to end up like rooting for chaos guys? And, and I, it was amazing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, what, like, yeah, as a trilogy of books, it's just amazing. Yeah. You know, how they, they're just like a bit sad and a bit lost and on the run and this, that, and the other. And, um, no resources. Yeah. Just doing everything they can to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like how, like they, I think some, yeah, like um, Aaron Dembski Bowden is such a great writer mm -hmm. um, for that sort of stuff, and the way he sort of makes you connect with these kind of like inhuman, like post ab human, yeah, sort of creatures and stuff. Like, yeah, the way they talk to their their servants. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think one of my favorite scenes in I tried to do it in a non spoilery way. Yeah, there is a scene where there's like. The, the first claw and they're fighting a space marine and one of them rocks up who's like has a, some kind of company champion and they and and they're missing someone from the the claw and and this company champion's just like spouting out all this imperial like oh, i'm so and so this title and they're just like Oh, we're going to die to this idiot because <laughs> <laughs> they they know they're outmatched. Yeah, but 
they hate him and oh it's just it's like how it's, Com- it's, commissar cave refers to him as emperor botherers yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, that that scene for what me scene? Was, was so good like I'd, I'd love to see anything like that you know i know now yeah. with your your love of the barbarian elements of things you i, I if you haven't read it and i talk about it a lot because it's a really great book you haven't read it again leaning into that barbarian thing is the um uh the spears the emperor the book about the the emperor's spears who are a barbarian race trapped it's on the list on the on the other side of the rift and it's and they stay the um there's a space marine chapter the mentors who generally get, get dispatched individually to train imperial guard units and to check on how things are going and get sent as emissaries emissaries where there's a bit of a lean on if you don't if you don't agree that there'll, there'll be more of us coming you know and he ends up having to work with these guys that are just really quite feral compared to what he's mm. used to, you know. And I like, you know, and, and depending on what island they're from, because it's a very water world, one of the island, the islands they come from, they all behave slightly differently. Yeah. And it's like, uh, um, you know, there's a bit where all of the, this just, and they're really sarcastically funny amongst themselves. Like it's one where um, they're all getting their armor on and uh, one of the space marines has no face it's been it's been blown off. Though it's been, I think it's been ripped off by somebody. He's got two bionic eyes. He's got both of his eyes are bionic, <laughs> and he's just got like this plated, you know. And when they're getting all the gear, one of the guys in his like the the team that he's part of is from an island where they're all cannibals, mm. and he's uh, he's like I think he, he's got like all his teeth are sharpened, and he says to this this marine, he goes, you know, is they're always really laying into each other in this, you know. Says um says um he says hey you know whatever his name is goes. Where's your face? You know, just taking the mission, you know, because he's got all this this plated when it should be, and they done this. And these guys got like a robotic voice because his throat's gone in the process. And goes, he's like, this is why he goes like, he's like, he's why? He's like, why do you ask? Are you hungry? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they're like, you know, and they like that all the time. But they're cool because they um they mainly um they mainly use um, they mainly carry a spear instead of mm. a chainsaw and stuff. And they they're quite cool. They're um. They're, I think they're, if I remember rightly, they're, so they're, they're, uh, slogan is something like um, red in the earth. Is what oh, yeah. You know, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's a great, it's a it's a really great book because it's got that real, they're all Marines, but there's a real fish out of water thing. But the whole yeah. story is told from the point of view of the mentor's, uh, one of the mentor's female assistants who sees one oh. of her eyes has been augmented. She sees what he sees. Oh, okay. And she gives him combat information live on the battlefield because obviously he doesn't generally work in a team, so he, he he hasn't got other Marines to give him information. He relies on these couple of servants that he has, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah, it's a it's a really it's a really you get good the book. human perspective. Yeah, and it, but I think yeah. uh, they lean into them being all a bit pelts and teeth on a necklace and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I think you'll be your yeah. your bag. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. So uh, we have some questions from our Patreon. Sure. Um, uh, we we put the word out that you're coming on, and uh, and Byron and Ross have thrown in a few as well. There's going to be some um, weirdness in here. We okay. apologise in advance. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> our patrons, much like us, don't take things uh, super duper seriously. So there'll be a question about cheese in there somewhere, and, yeah, oh, nice. um, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. No, yes. Um, yeah. So there's a few um, few. So some of the stuff we've covered. Um, in already um but yeah uh ross asks is, is there any special mix or brand of sculpting materials you use is it always green stuff from anywhere 50 50 or is it better 60 40 for example but you said 50 50 previously was that right yeah i yeah. did um yeah. that ratio can change depending on your style the, the more milliput you put in your mix the softer it's going to be initially yeah um and adding even as little as 30% milliput to green stuff is going to give you something that you can refine later. Mm. And then the more milliput you put in, obviously it's going to be softer. Um, I would start 50, 50 just to kind of give you a baseline. Yeah. Um, for weapons, I like to use Tamiya quick type. It's a, a lot like green stuff, but it's, you know, great how green stuff is so sticky. Mm. Tamiya quick type is just as sticky. So it'll stick to metal and then it will cure hard then you can refine it. So it, it's got that strength if it's going to be off of a weapon. But milliput green stuff works as well. Yeah. So think about that that ratio of how soft do you want the putty to be. Um, and if you are mixing your green stuff up, I typically mix in a little bit more yellow than blue, which, again, makes it more soft. So okay. the blue is the hardener, the, the yellow is the resin. 
Yeah. Um, playing with that ratio will give you a softer or harder mix from the get-go. Yeah. Is there, is there a, a particular use where you would prefer it to be softer initially or harder initially? Yeah, working with organic materials, I like a really soft mix off the bat to give me those fresh marks. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, tools, we've sort of already talked about. Someone said if uh, you could suggest a list of tools for beginners to pick up, what would they be? They would be your tools that you've made uh, <laughs> from your classes. Yeah, and the shapers that you can pick up are really going to depend on your style. I mean, Royal Sovereign makes some good shapers. I personally just use some cheap ones I bought at an art store in town. I like a softer tip. Mm. I'll use a, a cone-shaped soft shaper to um, let it flow through shapes I've already sort of put in place with my hard tools to the, soften them. It's kind of a back and forth of going between hard and soft tools. Yeah. Um, but as far as metal tools go that you can buy, um, I haven't really found any that that resonate with me in particular because of the way I hold them. I like very light tools that I can balance on my hands. I mm. making small motions and the bigger metal tools just aren't my style. They're too heavy for me. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then question about your process. Uh, do you generally have a go at a model all in one go or do you, do you do different parts and let's say, Oh, I'm going to completely finish an arm first or is yeah. it, layers are everything yeah stages and layers yeah and especially when you're working with epoxy putty and you're on that timeline um you're building in all those layers to then give you visual depth and you know mm. an interesting model so if i'm if i'm doing a belt that has a trim around the outside of it i'll put the shape of the belt in first i'll let that cure or at least get hard enough to where i'm not going to influence the shape any longer and then i'll make my sausages that will be the the trim yeah. Uh, or the piping around it, put those on, let that cure. If I want to do a leather wrap around there, I'll do that third and then put any kind of ornamentation on the front, like a skull, then maybe do the horns on the skull Then put, it's all steps and stages. Yeah. 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 Um, as someone has said, we, well, we've talked about, um, how the first thing you might sculpt is a beard, uh, as a good start project. Uh, do you have any projects you are putting off because, uh, they might seem quite like intimidating or mm, yeah um i i have a i have a feeling that that's why i work as slow as i do mm. um and i'm not a real big planner in terms of and i don't t typically work off of existing illustrations i kind of just feel it as i go and let each decision you know influence the next um, and sometimes I feel like I do get wrapped up in, in a little bit of that fear of, oh, is this going to be as good as the last guy? Mm. And I want to make sure that everything is, eh, you know, it, up to, up to, to snuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that creeps in a little bit with, with all my projects, um, just with the pace of the way I work. Um, but honestly doing this, this class and this workshop, preparing a bunch of models for students, mm cleaning all the models and helping them all through everything quickly as to where I'm, I'm a very methodical, more meditative, uh, worker when it comes to my own work. I think that's made a, made a little bit of a difference on me of, of wanting to, yeah. to, to strive forward through projects and get them done to get to the next one. Yeah. I've heard a good, um, a good thing to do is if you want to like master something, teach it. Like I've heard a few people say that, yeah. um, and it's a great way of learning more about your craft and how you sort of put it forwards and all that sort of stuff. It's interesting, like with the uh, like wanting every project to be up to snuff. Like I guess in in the YouTube term of things, it's kind of like oh well, this got that many views and that one got this many views and so uh -huh. on and so forth. Um, but also, I think in like my sort of uh, yeah day job ish now. Um, was like I filmed a lot of weddings mm. and I always used to go into every wedding going, this is going to be the, the best one that I've done. Yeah. Um, and there's so many variables outside of your control, like the weather in the UK, for example, is, is quite often horrific um, and all that sort of stuff. And sometimes just how I feel, like I, I look back at work. I remember I did a wedding in 2019 and at the time I was like, oh, that could have gone better and that could have gone better. I look back at it and I'm like, that's the best one I've ever done. 
Yeah. And that was like five years ago. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I hope I can do that again. Yeah, um, just keep moving forward, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I find it quite, I find it quite, quite interesting. Um, we have another question uh, from Tom. Can you sculpt me a glorious beard in real life? <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know what? That would be handy if you could do me one as well. So, you know, every now and again, I could just take this off and just really have a good yeah, scratch and yeah, put it back yeah. on again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, I'd love to see a Warhammer beard scaled up. Because um, I, I think it was on the... Um, Dark Angels upgrade sprue. They because quite often like there, there's a big book on there. Yeah, and there's indents for what would be some writing, but because it the book is scaled up for like tanks, yeah. it just sort of looks like like blobs. It doesn't really read as as it's words. words yeah. Whereas when it's smaller, you can kind of go, oh, okay. Like I wish they preferred. I wish they'd left that blank and um, let you just tap it in yourself. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so real beard sculpting. Keen to give it a go? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, Tom, that, that'll be with you. Heavy, though. It'd be heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah, all made out of green stuff, yeah. Uh, what's your favourite Space Wolf character and why? Oh. Yes. That's tough. There's a Space Wolf called Ranolf the Strong. Are you guys familiar? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me. <laughs> um, he is one of the biggest space marines to ever live. He was just as big as Russ almost. So they would, you would see them from afar and think, oh, that's Russ. But no, it was Ranolf. Oh, no. <laughs> he, uh, you know, obviously had his Terminator armor and of course led a, a 300 esque standoff, where standoff, standoff um, in a corridor against a mass of orcs. Yep. And they killed so many orcs that when they were finally overrun and Ranolf was killed, the orcs put his body on top of the corpse pile as a god, like to <laughs> to, to worship him. <laughs> yeah, and I, and when I read like that, like Yarick, aren't they? They love Yarick, the commissar Yarick, the orcs, he, like, because oh, he's so yeah, he's such a boss. Yeah, yeah. And when I read that, I was like. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah. That's this, brilliant. In one of the uh, Ultramarine novels, uh, there is a character, there is an Ultramarine who's grown so big that his um, his torso and the top half of him is in all in standard um, Space Marine armor, but he has to have Terminator leg armor. Oh right, he's so big. He has to he's he never yeah, skip he's leg day. Yeah. trunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, that's fun. They're good. You know, the Orcs. They they're like that was you know good. Good effort. Yeah. yeah. We'll revere yeah. you for that. Well done. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Still beat you though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, any top tips for green stuff slash epoxy, please, says Josh. I know we talked about that quite a bit, but yeah, is there anything just, else that springs to mind? Uh, go slow and think about the, don't try not to tear the putty when you're working with it. Tearing it will create a torn edge that will then be st really sticky and start to stick to your fingers and your tools think about the compression of those marks and going slow and trying not to break the surface of it unless you really intend to do so yeah oh very good yeah um who is the best primark and why is it the great wolf aka the wolf king aka russ <laughs> <laughs> uh yes he is the best primark uh, um why um because he just is. Uh, <laughs> because yeah. he can it's just facts, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you um do you, do you hope Games Workshop go back to him or would you rather they left him alone out there? Um I think it's inevitable, right? I think they're they're the, gonna yeah. actually they they gotta find him at some point. I mean he's lost out there, right? Mm. Um or he's gonna return during the wolf time. Uh but yeah, I think they'll redo him. I'm I would be all right with it. But is he not when you have the, the the talents and the skills that you've got is not always that potential sense of disappointment that oh. someone's going to come back and go oh that's not why how i would have done him or that's you know yeah don't get wrong i think primarchs are it's but you know i thought rubert gilliman was all right but i thought the lion was a really well done miniature mm -hmm. oh really, the latest lion yeah I think yeah it was really really good but i, think, I thought it was cool too and, but i was a little bit you know even though i don't play space wolves i always do keep a, a an, an eye on them because i do i still do love them but I always thought, 
that's that thing as you go you bring him back and it's not like what you know mm. it's like when they do redid logan grimnar and i was like no i like to run and one in terminator armor from from yeah. earlier on more you yeah. know it's like i didn't really want him in a sled you know yeah i i mean when they redid the horus mini i yeah. was really impressed with that the that was really good the horus ascended like horus the, ascended. the newest yeah. One. Yeah. yeah 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 it's such a it is a one of those miniatures that's so nice i always think so i should never be allowed near that <laughs> yeah. interesting like from from a lot of the sculptors that we've talked to lots of them really rate the forge world primarchs and hmm. have good things to say about them would you ever have a a stab at, at kit bashing in and sculpting on lumen russ yeah nice absolutely i'd love to see that yeah, yeah. and going back to your question of a release that maybe isn't up to snuff of what i would expect yeah that's kind of why i hobby i, I yeah. don't look for every release to be exactly what i want i look at it as a challenge because i know i'm going to change yeah so much because i want to really make it my own it's a sort of semi-blank canvas for you isn't yeah it? and i think that was a big reason why i really like space wolves is they're so individualistic and they yeah. each one's a little hero that it gives me that opportunity to do that so yeah if ever there was an army where every if ever there is a 40k army where every miniature in it deserves a name yeah it's space walls of that exactly. <laughs> yeah that's really good yeah um so tim asks serious question mm. have you done a lemmy killmeister tribute mini yet i and have no why not i have oh sensational yeah i've done the lemmy yeah, yeah with the uh the handlebar beard yeah uh, yeah <laughs> he's um a, a somewhat recent one he's pointing yeah uh he's got this kind of like go over there and kill something mm. Yeah. Um, and the particular head that I used has this awesome chin with this, like, just like a brick chin, right? And I thought, I need to leave that thing proud, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I gave him the handlebar and, you know, he's got the flowing hair. And I, yeah, there is a, a, a shot of Lemmy on stage um, looking in a direction. I put it on my stories. I should make the post yeah. of a side by side of him. Yeah. But I think I did all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he, he could be nothing else but a space, but a space wolf. Le oh. Lemmy could he? If you ever, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Love that guy. Okay, we we have a uh, a we've come to a cheese question. Oh, yeah, but, that's what happened. Uh, Christopher has very cleverly wound it into sculpting as well. Oh, if you could sculpt your favorite cheese onto a model, what would be your preferred material? And what cheese would it be? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have actually sculpted with cheese before. Um, I was sitting on the couch with uh, string cheese. Er, with what's the cheese that so you push the side of the little nozzle and it squirts out? Oh, we don't. Yeah. We, we don't really get it here. Yeah, well, yeah. that cheese. So it's like cheese in a can. It's like it, it's it's awful stuff. It's like cheese it's, whiz. Something yeah, like yeah, it's cheese whiz. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you put it on a cracker and it like makes this little flower. Yeah. Oh. So and, uh, you take our cheese really seriously, UK. That, that we, if it oh. comes in a if it comes in a can, it's not allowed in England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, it it's very soft. And I it, I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I'm like, oh, I could do, I could work with this, and I started making a little beard out of a cheese beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there you go, man. Yeah, yeah. Visions you then would be like being, you know, like um, you know, like when Richard Dreyfus becomes obsessed with the Devil's Tower in Close Encounters, mm -hmm. and he starts making it out of, yes. out, out of the mashed potato. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was having yeah. me dinner, and I accidentally made the three foot tall space wolves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. See, my my interpretation of that question is, um, I think like, oh, there was a space wolf. He was having some cheese and crackers oh there's a war oh, on yeah um and he's just got like a i don't know like a wheel of cheese like three, qu yeah, belt three quarters of a big e yeah. i'm just strapped yeah. into his belt yeah. Yeah. well that's every time i do a pouch on a space wolf belt yeah i usually always make some sort of question in the post like what do you think he's got and <laughs> yeah it's always like is it full of peanuts or what's going on yeah snacks? dog treats dog treats yeah, yeah. scooby that's snacks yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's very good yeah um uh, this one very simple from Greg sweet or savory oh god since I've turned 40 I need a little sweet after every meal 
<laughs> so I, I finish up any meal and I'm like, oh, I just need a little something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, my palate is exactly the same. But I'm thinking by the time I get to about 60 that every meal will have to be followed with something that's actually covered in custard. I think <laughs> uh, the second part will be like a full secondary meal. Yeah. You know, you know so great. I eat enough as it is, but it's going, that, that, no custard. Yeah. 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 Um, so oh, this is a cool name. My grandfather's axe. Mm. Oh. Says simply, how? Um, <laughs> <laughs> your work is awesome. Your tip for mixing Millipot with green stuff and letting it sit before starting to work it have been invaluable to me. Thank you. Oh, that's You're welcome. Sweet. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Skinny Man asks, always found the idea of sculpting a bit intimidating. Uh, what would you recommend as first project to someone who has never used the material before? So the hair. Yeah. 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 It's straightforward. It's forgiving. Hairline first. Yeah. Brilliant. And then finally, our last question. Do you enjoy sculpting models which aren't Space Force? Uh, what I'm really asking is, would you consider sculpting the luscious long hair on a great unclean one. Oh. Love your work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, I can I can really jive with anything. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. I guess like if you're like, oh, how can I sculpt this luscious mane? You can just look in a mirror. That is such an amazing oh. for us. <laughs> this is he knows how to flatter. <laughs> Stop. So, yeah. Yeah. Stop. Amazing. Do you know, I was like, you know, so I, one of the things I do all right uh, with painting is um, head stubble. Yeah. And people, and, and people go, you really could do it. And I go, well, I work around it all day. You know, yeah. I know that generally, like. yeah. generally people don't have to the skin head. That it's, it's very, it's like that for, you know, very short amounts of time. And just learn that, you know, a bit of grey, but leaning back into the natural paint, the, the natural yeah. skin tone you've used. Is what you would probably see more likely, and you go, you do it. You you you, you lean back on what you know, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those are all our questions. Um, we will probably want to wrap things up so we can get you to your train. Yeah, yeah, um, and and make sure you can go and see your friends in other parts of the country. Excellent. Um, but thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, guys. Really um, yeah, kind of you. Thank you, mate. I feel like I ask quite basic silly questions but it comes from a place of wanting to just learn so much stuff no they're great um, questions and it, it helps dispel that mystery right yeah and i think that's been that's been really really helpful for for me is i see so much stuff like like using an airbrush or um you know certain sizes of brushes and i'm just like this just seems impossible and you're like no you just you just have a poke around it's it's good fun um yeah. so if you're watching and think, oh, sculpting, that sounds horrible. Like, give it a shot. Yeah. 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 Or wait till you're back and you can teach them. I can. That's yeah. right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I yeah. definitely plan on doing some more workshops in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Are you but sold out for Nova as well? Yeah. Well, no. Uh, it hasn't been uh, hasn't been announced yet. Okay. Oh, for the they, they haven't been um, um, up for sale yet, I don't think. So yeah. with our American viewers, they may still have a opportunity when they goes up that you'll yeah. be yeah check it out absolutely yeah, yeah. so uh please go and follow jason on on his instagram on valbjorn yeah uh and keep up to date with all your uh fenrisian fabricating and uh yeah, yeah if fantastic. you want to learn check me out on patreon there we go yes absolutely yeah again thank you so much it's yeah. been really appreciated hi mom yeah. hi dad <laughs> 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 thank you guys this has been really fun oh yeah. great stuff amazing yeah. so much thank you very much there we go see you next time bye bye awesome